everyone, welcome to the Anime Izuka Podcast. On this episode, we'll be just giving our thoughts on the anime Shadow's House. I'm your host, David, and joining today, we have Taylor. Hello. And Justin. Hey, guys. All right, so if you're new to this podcast, uh, the format we're going to do, we take a show that we recently watched, in this case, Shadow's House, and give our thoughts about it. Um, this will be full of spoilers, so just a warning. Um, uh, we will have a section at the end where uh we can we'll, we'll leave a timestamp in the description where you can go and just give her we'll give her general thoughts for spoiler free just if you want to see if you want to check it out or not so that's the format of this uh we usually do these full for your questions if you want to if you want to hear our thoughts on the current season anime uh, we do have a discord so check the description for the discord you can join there and we have uh text channels available where we uh, give our thoughts for current season so if you want to do that feel free to join us but today we're going all in on shadow styles Woo! Before we begin, uh, let me just give some general info on Shadow's House. This aired spring 2021 season. Uh, this is based off a manga, so not an original. Um, this is by Cloverworks. Yes, that same Cloverworks that did Promise Neverland, um, but it's different director. So, so like no no relations to like the division with Promise Neverland. This is a totally separate director. Uh, what was he? Kazuki Ohashi. He didn't really have much credits besides Persona Five. So. I guess mm. I don't know if he was new or not, but uh, thirteen episodes so so far. Uh, manga is still ongoing, so um, as of this recording, we're not sure if there's a second season or not. But uh, manga is ongoing, and we also we are aware that like some things in the anime is different from the manga, so we'll address that when we get there. So, so that's the awesome. Yeah, that's just general info about the studios and all that. So let's jump into uh, this first episode just to describe what's happening in this show so in this first episode um we're giving our introductions to to i guess the main the main core of the story the shadows and the living dolls so we're introduced into this this giant mansion i mean it's, it's called shadow's house but like it's a giant freaking mansion that has a whole bunch of people you have these shadows which basically is just People like complete. It's just like basically like a silhouette of a person that's all completely black, and they 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 have a special property where they emit soot. So basically, like yeah, they're all like completely black. And they have soot, and they have their counterparts, which is the living dolls. Uh, these living dolls, they're they're um, they're humongous. They're supposed to be um a faithful recreation of the shadow. So so in this. First episode, we're introduced to the main character, Amiko. He's you know this tiny, this little girl, blonde hair, blue eyes, and she, her. So she, she's a living doll, and she has a master named Kate. And so, so Kate, um, so the, the the purpose of the living doll is that they're supposed to act as the mass, as the shadows' faces because you know these shadows are completely black; you can't see their face. So the living dolls are supposed to act as a way for the, the shadows to emit emotion and. She, especially for facial expressions. So that's the purpose of the living dolls, and they act more as like servants to the shadows. So, so this first, first episode, this is what we're very introduced to mainly just like just Amiko and Kate, and just getting her, uh, Amiko just getting used to working for Kate and being part of this shadow's house. So that's, I guess, the most general description I can get of the show in the first <laughs> episode. So I want to hand over to Taylor and Justin, um, what were your impressions of the show after that first episode? Love yeah. it. <laughs> um, first and foremost, I think you you know nailed it with the description here, David. Um, and to Taylor's point, I absolutely loved the first episode. Uh, mm-hmm. I will admit I was a little biased in the fact that, you know, leading into this show, I had heard that, you know, if you were a fan of the Promised Neverland manga and especially kind of the psychological survival type elements of that show, then Shadow's House was kind of in that same vein. So I, I admittedly knew what I was getting into with the show where I feel like, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, David Taylor, um, you guys potentially didn't know that originally. And that was something that, you know, I kind of brought to your attention, which led to you guys deciding to watch the show. I knew oh, yeah. it was like Cloverworks. And so, and I knew, like, I, I don't know, I didn't know, I didn't see any of the online stuff. But I had a feeling that this was something popular. So, mm. or like with the I knew was nothing. Popular. So, I just saw a bunch I, of like lolly looking girls and I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw I saw right. the title Shadow's House and I saw like the I saw like a musical 
he's like in all the the, the key visuals. So I was like, it's mm-hmm. called Shao's House, and there's this little girl. So I'm assuming there's gotta be more in it, though. Well, I'm glad to hear you know you have that that perceptive ability there to see past kind of as, as Taylor said, you know, all these happy, sunny, smiley, lolly type characters that they have in their promotional arc and and taking it a step deeper. Because admittedly, I do think you know that is a reason that many people didn't initially yeah. decide to pick yeah. up this show. I definitely think um, that. Um, yeah. and, and as we kind of get deeper into the conversation, we'll, we'll definitely be telling them why they made a, a mistake for not doing so. But getting back to your point of the first episode, um, no, I, I thought it was a great introduction to the show. They did a really good job, I think, of one, describing kind of the larger picture of the Shadow House. And kind of, as you said, David, you know, the whole purpose of this house between the Shadow Lords and their living doll counterparts, but more specifically getting us immediately really attached to Amilico and Kate, this duo, you know, that are working with one another. But first kind of, you know, seeing that they're not the best duo at at the beginning of their kind of relationship, we'll call it. So that was something I think for me that was was really interesting to see. And as you were kind of peeling back the layers of what was going on here, apart from just being a reflection of the shadow figure's emotions. I will say that actually the first episode I actually wasn't really into. Like, I kind of thought it was slow. So Mm. I wasn't really sure what I was going to enjoy or not based off this first episode. It wasn't until episodes two and three is when I when I it picked up for me. So so I had to wait. I had to wait for a little bit for it to pick up. Like, I like I know you two were really into the first episode, but like for me, like I had to wait a little bit for it to actually like get to me i think for me it was just a matter of like by the end i already wanted to know more about what was happening so i can't remember if i felt like it was slow or not i just remember at the very end thinking oh i i'm very curious to see where this goes and so that's kind of what sold me on that because it's not very often i actually feel that way after the very first episode of an anime most first episodes i feel can be um like just a little bit like they'll they'll present a concept of what it's supposed to be about but then it changes so much over the course of the show and so i feel mm. like a first episode isn't a very good example but this one i i was just very excited to see where it went next um Cause, cause also for, like the oh. music was so good it made me even more excited <laughs> to like keep watching it the ending was so good and hearing it i was like i feel like this is going to go places because i thought the first episode like i thought it felt like more slice of life for me and so that's why i was like on the fence so it wasn't until like later on I realized it wasn't. Yeah, I, I feel like that's a definitely good point that you bring up, David, is like Amilico's character is very much a misdirection of what this show kind of will get into, where she is very, you know, cheery and positive mm-hmm. and, and outgoing in the sense of, you know, the entire first episodes of her interactions with Kate is just being this person that's just overly positive. And, you know, as we get introduced to Kate, she is the polar opposite of that. So I can definitely kind of get get your 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 thoughts there of why you weren't fully sold in the, in the first kind of 20 minutes of the first episode and everything. I, I think for me, like um, just the concept of her acting as the shadow person's face was already just uh, just on the surface, knowing nothing else. I already thought that was already a creepy enough concept that even if she was cheery, <laughs> it didn't really throw me off because that's not normal. Something's definitely deeper here. Um, yeah so fair fair yeah so so that's the first episode and then um so we get into more of the episodes like you know so two we're introduced to more of the supporting cast so uh try i'm actually i'm trying to remember more what happened in episode two but like um yeah we definitely mm-hmm. were introduced to more of the cleaning people and they end up becoming, becoming you know important um characters uh, um i saw see episode three Oh, yeah, it's called Soot Sickness. This is the one that really got to me, where like the creepy factor really set in. This is where, um, where they like all the soot like gather up, and they have to go clean it, and then it, it turns, it ends up being where like the huge ball of soot like ends up um taking who's the who's the character? I think Rose. Yeah, I think it's Rosemary. It's either Sarah or Rosemary. Yeah, I think it's Rosemary. It ends up yeah Sarah. accumulating into what they call a phantom. Yeah. So mm-hmm. so so Rosemary, she her. Like she got so absorbed by by the the soot that like yeah she became a phantom. She basically becomes like so dazed and lifeless, and and this had this really like creepy expression on her. Like I think like even the soot had like a creepy expression, and then and then like after it took like what like came on to Rosemary, like she had this really creepy expression. This is when the the creep factor really like set in for me. This is when I realized okay, 
this is like this is way more than I, I was expecting for that first episode, and that's where I was more on your eyes' line, like getting to the show. So that was a huge. Now, now you're for sold me. in more so. Yeah. Um, no, I totally agree with that. I think you know episodes two and three were really expanding the world of the Shadow House beyond you know what we initially saw with just really building that relationship between Amilico and Kate, and Amilico kind of learning her purpose of being a living doll and doing her utmost to you know do so and then once in this episode like you said you know she finally gets to explore outside of her room meet other living dolls and kind of see their demeanors and objectives within this house um that was just something that i think was a really great choice for them to do and and really kind of expand upon what the story is trying to tell and then immediately like you said you know once we get these scenes where they're trying to clean up all these soots and scorches or these little monster type beings plaguing the house and and getting it dirty and everything immediately we get introduced to the phantom scene where for anybody that's played half-life when i saw that scene i just got reminded of like the head crabs from half-life essentially and i think even further david you know as we kind of get later into the discussion of the series knowing what we know about certain things that scene has a lot more impact now of just like the creep factor of everything Mm -hmm. so also, something like, to come when we get to later stages. Yeah, but it's like also it it also really like for me it also stresses the importance of like the cleaning crew and cleaning up the soot because you you think from like the first two episodes like it's just like a <laughs> like a sand I mean just like just like as a wait uh, the cleansiness thing of like all oh, like the shadows are emitting the soot it's all dirty so you know naturally you want to wipe the dirt away but then like this episode really shows oh if you don't clean this up it can actually affect you like negatively so. You, it's like it's kind of mm-hmm. like a, a life or death thing here so this really shows like the importance of like okay like like the dolls have a really important role they're not just just like the cleaning people here like they're, they're really like like here too like it's, it's like it's like yeah a really important role to have for this house so again like just adding on to that that lore and maybe more interested in and like in this lore because like thing too about like these first couple episodes like like there's so much things happening in the background that like that makes me really interested in the lore that they like they don't like say like they don't like express it directly but like you can tell there's so much things happening in the background so that's like mm-hmm. i feel like that, that, that's, that's a really strong point of the show is is that it's like like i don't know how to describe yeah. it there's gotta be like, a better word for it but well i don't have like a specific word for it but what i was gonna say was um it feels very much like i felt very much like i was in Amilico's shoes even though like, not in a sense of, like, me replacing her, like how some shows do that. Um, like, I didn't feel like I was her. I just felt like I was very much seeing from her, from what she was seeing, learning things at her pace, exactly as she would learn them. Um, there wasn't really, like, you don't see any scenes of characters off screen talking to each other outside of her. Any, or If you do, it's very rare. And so it feels like a very organic learning process for the lore and really helps with the mystery element that's, as that's well. Actually a, that's actually a really good point. Yeah, because, like, because... Mm-hmm. Because a lot of shows try to do that, where like where they throw like the main character in like this new environment, and like and they're trying to like you know yeah they're trying to show you like take you from main character's perspective, and that they did a really good job in this show where like where mm-hmm. Kate is so like she's so out of her element, she doesn't know anything that's going on, and so the way that she learns is really good for building out lore for us. So yeah, mm-hmm. that, that's a really good point. Yeah. I will say this, though, and we can put it later on in this uh, in this little talk if you want to. But as we were talking about how these dolls are cleaning and that's a really important purpose of them to get rid of all this soot, I did kind of sit here and think I'm actually a bit surprised that they do have these dolls doing all the cleaning because they are literally supposed to be the sh- like their shadow masters faces like they're supposed to be with them all the time. So now looking back on it, that seems a little bit weird to me that that's like such a big emphasis that they should be spending so much of their time doing. But that's just an aside thought. Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely ties into both of your guys' points on you begin to learn more of, like, the hierarchy of mm-hmm. the Shadow House itself and, and the kind of role coverage, if you will, of, as you just mentioned, the living doll of themselves and what they all do in their day-to-day kind of experiences. Mm-hmm. And conversely, what the Shadow Masters or the Shadow Lords do in, in their day-to-day perspectives so i'd say that was something for me to to david's point directly is like once you began to see the expansiveness of the shadow house mm-hmm. and the different again hierarchies that are at play it really just you know continued to grow this world and kind of 
draw you in as a mm-hmm. viewer to want to understand the inner workings mm-hmm. of that hierarchy. It's actually pretty impressive since it's all just in one mansion. It's at one location. The pretty with a huge bit of an extension all. that we'll get into, but but still, it's it's impressive that they did manage to infuse so much information and in, in world building in just a mansion. I'm right, it's cool. and they, they do it very quickly and very easily to digest, which mm-hmm. I think is a good thing. Like they could have made it very convoluted if they wanted to, and, and mm-hmm. that would have I think turned you know some people off. But mm-hmm. it reminds me of like, a good balance. Like, of like like older and smaller Japanese games where it takes place in like one location, like a mansion, like aren't you like those, like those like RPG maker game where it just takes place in like, in like a house or a mansion. Mm, so That's a good point. Yeah. Cause I feel mm-hmm. like a lot of shows now, they are much more of that kind of like expansive, like great fantastical world and everything. And you don't get to see a lot of shows that do only take place in a singular location. So mm-hmm. maybe that was another thing subconsciously that I, I really enjoyed about this show as well. Cause you don't see it as often. Um, I do want to bring up that on, on episode four, this is the one where mm-hmm. so we're introduced to the Veil dolls, and they're basically just like they're I guess like I don't know if, if they are like living dolls, but basically like they bring they they bring stuff through their carts, but they're like they're they they don't even talk, they're just like they're lifeless, and they just I guess like I guess like just take orders and stuff. But I guess in the anime, this is one part where like where the anime kind of deviates slightly from the manga. And this is when people start bringing up because, like, because again, this is Cloverworks, so people were very worried about having another Promise Neverland. So, so this actually caused like the the author, because I think the author was um, involved in the anime production too. So, mm. um, so this this caused the author to say, like, like they he had to acknowledge that, like, yeah, we it is different from the manga. Um, so that um, if we he was saying like like you know theoretically, if we do have a second season, not saying we are, but saying if we do. We'll, we'll try to um make cover, uh, you know fill in those potholes so mm. but i, I mean, don't know justin, how to feel about that honestly I was, like i'll say justin like, you, you were looking at that and you were saying that it's not really that much of a change from the manga it's just like it's just people i, I think it's like what like people just being cautious because of what happened promise neverland there's, yeah i mean it, it's one of those things like PTSD. you said <laughs> it's so it's you know coming so fresh off of the absolute train wreck that was the promise yeah. neverland season two that you know, yeah, people were worried, but I can't help but feel like it really sucks to see that, you know, when you have a few shows that really kind of just take a wrong turn at the end of the day, it really does impact now, like the entire viewing experience of shows, especially when they're coming from a source material where I, I almost feel bad. Like, you know, as you said, David, when they had, you know, this initial small change of the way that they introduced the shadowed uh, or the veiled dolls, excuse me in the show the author had to come forward and be like hey you know we hear you i i know it's different we're doing it different because of you know the format the 13 episodes and and the way that we're doing it from an anime but please just have faith in me like it really sucks to see like that's kind of hopefully not becoming the norm but i can't help but think now like you're just gonna have a bunch of people like overly scrutinizing shows and anytime it deviates in the slightest without seeing the full picture at the end of the day they're just gonna you know go to reddit and be like this is different. This is wrong. Like, what's happening? And it's just like, you know, chill. <laughs> I mean, so I'm I don't not... know. It's a, it's a hard middle ground to find. I feel yeah. like now with what we saw with Promise Neverland. I think it's just been like a couple. Well, as you guys have mentioned, I mean, we're just coming right on the heels of um, Promise Neverland. So I, I really do think that people are just kind of going through a little bit, a little bit of PTSD with that. I don't think it would normally be so extreme if there had been a little bit more of a break um well, also, and like there have been just a, like a couple mainstream shows where when it deviates that much that quickly it has gone and just continued to deviate even more like tokyo ghoul re whenever it came out you know mm, that kind of thing so i well, think I, that's why people are scared, i tried to but... suppress that one in my memories but uh, it sorry it drove that, drug that back up like that's, an example, <laughs> that's like that's an example of why people are, are worried and have ptsd <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I guess not to, you know, dwell too much longer on this point. The only other thing for me is like, if I don't know about the source material, I do always want to see the perspective of those that are viewing like, you know, the anime for the first time and seeing like, do they pick up on it? Where I feel like with um, Shadow's house here with the veiled dolls, I would have been none the wiser. Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't. You I could didn't have told know. me nothing and, and it would have not affected me one little bit. Well, you know I didn't I mean? know until you told like, me, Justin. So, uh, yeah, sorry. It, it just happened. I read the Reddit thread that one day, you know, a really bad habit. Like, I shouldn't do that. But um, yeah, I mean, 
I think that's the big thing for me. Like with Promise Neverland, I know like that again was me being more vocal and like telling like, you guys. But I feel like even if I didn't tell you guys anything, you would have been like, something known. doesn't feel right. We, we, like, we, this yeah. feels we, really we, rushed we knew, and weird. Like after, like you're yeah, not, you know, everyone like knew after that <laughs> episode. <laughs> we could tell. So, yeah, watch. I mean, so. I was I was more confused, but like, like when you when you said it, then it clicked. Whereas like here, like you when you said, you know, about the, the, I was like, oh, like okay. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Yeah. Change, so. so I think that's the thing where it's like you have that confusion from a promise Neverland and like that confusion just continues. Then it's like, OK, hey, something's something's not right here. But with this, it's like it changes nothing. Everything continues to flow as is. It's just an additional, you know, concept that's now being introduced to the show, which is fine. Didn't mm-hmm. spoil anything or do anything differently in my eyes. So. Yeah, so the, the, the TLDR version of this conversation is basically that, like, don't be scared and don't compare it to other shows that have made some changes. This one's flowed very smoothly. It didn't affect the pacing. Did it, As an anime only, it really didn't, like, the deviations they made didn't, re, like, detain from the enjoyment of the show. Can't speak or promise for a, for a season two if that would be the same thing for the next season, if it would go off the rails or not. But yeah. for this season, totally enjoyable still. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah. So this first four episodes, um, basically, is a lot of the introduction. The really big, I guess, arc in the show is the debut arc, like when, like when things get really serious. Actually, now I think, uh, because um, because in the debut, like we're introduced to all these other characters that like that I guess technically you're competing with, but then like, but because the first early episodes we're introduced to like to like to, um, who was it? Rosemary and um, uh, the other Sarah. I think, Sarah, was, was it Mia? I think, it or, or, I think it's Mia and Sarah is her. Oh right, right, right. Master. You're right. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so like we're introduced to those two characters, and then they're like they're basically gone during this debut arc. So I completely forgot about them until just now. So yeah, but but to your point, before we get to the debut, just kind of tying in the segue to you know kind of the meat and potatoes of this first season. Um, after the events of, you know, the Phantom and everything abducting uh, Rosemary or whoever it was during their cleaning efforts, um, we get introduced to some characters that become very pivotal in kind of the relationship with Emilico of uh, Ricky, uh, Sean, and Rum, the other living dolls that, you know, have their corresponding Shoutmasters because they basically were brought together because of how poorly they dealt with the Phantom situation. Mm Mm-hmm. So just kind of tying into like the debut and for people that, you know, just to give them further context, like the debut was not the first time that these characters involved in the debut met. I forgot mm-hmm. about so they've that. had experiences okay. from for what that happened up, during these cleaning events. Yeah. Well, yeah, and actually they had to do that um, that stuff after hours too, like in the middle of the night. Because yep. I remember Kate was going through all that stress of having to like kind of prepare and study because... and do things on her own. She's like, "Where's Emilico? Like I've been waiting forever." And Emilico's yeah. off, yeah. like saving the mansion. Because with they're, her get, they're they're getting bitched out by by Bar- Barbara. Barbie. Oh, good old Barbie. Yeah, yeah, Barbie. I can't remember why though. I can't remember. I think it wasn't really a strong reason. I think she just decided to pick on. Them. <laughs> Barbie just has that common, power, you know, gets tripping. a little bit of power. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So. So. so, but anyways, on to the main event of this debut. So, yeah. so I mean, I don't know first... about you guys, but the debut is my favorite arc. Like half the show. I, so I would agree with it. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those I'll, things I'll where it's so, like, much, it's like, so much happens. The show, basically, because it's like it's <laughs> more than half the show. So. <laughs> fine <laughs> well they picked the right thing to focus on then didn't yeah. they <laughs> yeah so like so we're introduced to i guess the first part of the debut where it's, where it's both the shadow and um like the shadow and the living doll having worked together to do and i'm introduced to edward too and so he's like he becomes i guess the main like antagonist of this arc so mm-hmm. i don't know like i guess um we had the first like the first kind of part of the debut um from the get-go like i just remember thinking like it's either a miracle and kate or like a like, rum and shirley are probably the ones that end up like getting like last place or not passing just because that's how that's how like the show was like felt like it was like getting us towards so i, I had i had that, that that mindset throughout this whole like trial like one of those two are, are not like getting through because like that's it's either like it's either like this is what they're baiting us to do or it's like they got like bait and switch just at the last second and then someone else doesn't get through so that's what i was thinking yeah, of I, when we first like got through when we first started this debut arc 
I think that's something that I really enjoyed as well as kind of the flipping of the script, if you will, of kind of like exactly as you mentioned, David, you know, when everybody came into debut, you have, you know, certain pairs that don't really know much about the debut and kind of are very reluctant or hesitant of how they should act and what they should do. And then you have, you know, the other half who are very confident in themselves and very kind of what they believe to be familiar with the debut. And as we kind of see, you know, apart from this initial kind of uh, test that Edward puts them through, um, everything immediately changes and they all kind of get put on a level playing field, so to speak, with where they go next. And I really I really enjoyed that personally, because it really just kind of level set the game apart from what you said, where it's like, OK, these people for sure are going to win and these pairs are for sure going to lose. You know, like so. this first stage with like the when the Shadow Master and like the Living Dolls have to work together. I, I don't know. I was, I was just really confused about this whole like this whole first part of the trial. Like I had no idea. Like, like, I mean, I guess the whole point was like because like you don't they don't know what they're supposed to do. So they're supposed to figure it out. But like, I don't know. I had a really hard time like trying to understand what was the whole point of all this. So this, See, this part really it. lost this, this part like lost me. Like I wasn't really feeling this first part. That first part of the debut was my absolute favorite part because I really liked that by that point you were starting, as you mentioned, Justin, we were kind of starting to understand that the actual Shadow Masters were not, they weren't any more knowledgeable about the situation than the living dolls were. And since you mm -hmm. kind of, feel, since you're kind of put in the perspective of a living doll more, you kind of think, oh, our Shadow Overlords probably know things, but they don't. And I think that was really well shown during this opening segment where um like edward you know who's supposed to be judging everything they do he's got all their different little avatars on a shelf and he keeps on moving them up and down <laughs> and honestly if you really want to nitpick you don't even know if it's but probably it's better to be on top but you don't really know because you know so little about what he's looking for mm -hmm. um so i really i really liked the fact that i didn't know anything because it made me uncomfortable and i liked that feeling of being uncomfortable it made me anxious and excited to see what happened next and learn what the rules were. So I thought personally, I thought it was really well executed. I'd agree with that. The tests that you don't know what exactly you're being tested mm -hmm. on are always a very kind of, I don't know what the best word to use for. I, I'll just say interesting kind of perspective to view something from where you see kind of this, this scramble mm -hmm. of sorts of like, okay, what we thought we knew, we don't know. And now we're just kind of going to go with it. And, Lo and behold, you know, who does it come down to to move the gang on to the next part? Amilico. You mm -hmm. know, the one that we would think, oh, there's no way she's going to know what to do. She's just, you know, always very over the top, almost ditzy in, in nature. And she's the one that gets them to the next step where the debut admittedly really opens up to the mm -hmm. next portion of the test. I mm -hmm. guess I'm not one to help then, but... I did really enjoy the next part where um so we, where we learned that shadows had to be separated from the living dolls, and then it was up to the living dolls to find find their shadow masters and make it to I guess like the center of the garden or the exit. So this part I I really enjoyed it because like I think it really like gave a lot of development to the individual living dolls and the shadow masters, and maybe like really like be able to like because before I guess before this I didn't really know much about them or i have that much understanding but then after this i felt really connected to like their character so that's mm -hmm. why i really enjoy about like the lab the labyrinth like part of this mm -hmm. other debut like yeah yeah that's a really strong part of the show all the characters have very distinct personalities they're all fleshed out i mean honestly amilico and kate i suppose are the main characters but they don't really it, it much more feels like an ensemble cast a strong ensemble cast so i really enjoyed that and um the labyrinth really put that in focus for me this section i didn't like as much only by hair only by hair and that's just because it felt a little long but that's also because i just wanted to know what was going to happen next like i was so curious like all of you people who will be binge watching this you're not even going to notice or be upset about it at all but waiting week by week it felt like such incremental <laughs> i didn't remember, I didn't remember the the feeling <laughs> there's a lot of shows in spring scene where had this so much this, this you know, clip here it's like god damn i need that episode now i can't wait till yeah. next week so <laughs> this show is definitely one of them where like during this part like, i did have that feeling like oh mm -hmm. god like i need the next episode I mean, hey, it's a it's a telltale sign of a good show, right? When you're just fiending for that next little next little hit, next mm -hmm. little content. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I guess for my end, like I don't really feel 
too different in terms of like my enjoyment or disenjoyment. I, I'd say it remained pretty much the same on like the higher enjoyable end. I think, like you said, Taylor, you know, this latter part of the labyrinth was a really great opportunity for us to learn more about the other living dolls and kind of their personalities and specifically in the different groupings that they, you know, went off in or, you know, connected with throughout the events of this test. Um, I thought that was really great. And I, I think I was able to gain a lot more respect and kind of compassion for certain mm -hmm. characters that maybe before going into it, I, I didn't really care too I much mean, more. If you had mentioned that, man, I got to give shout outs to Ricky and Patrick, man. Yeah. I was right? just going to say. Like, <laughs> like, those are the homies. Which is because, again, <laughs> so. we, 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 were much, we were talking about this too, how like, because they look, it looks just like Michael Trout, uh, like, Draco like Malfoy. Draco Malfoy. Drake, Draco Malfoy. <laughs> like, he even wears green. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? That like, had to be on like purpose. The same haircut, right. <laughs> and like, and like, there's they have that that annoying attitude and being just like him. And then they mm -hmm. go through the same redemption arc, just like just like <laughs> Malfoy does. So it's like, so it's kind of funny, but like, but but besides that, like, mm -hmm. no, I gotta give shout outs to like how like they really they really um like changed my mind, like how I like. From a character that I really actually dislike to someone that that actually I really to someone that actually I did respect for the turnaround where like where they 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 were actually willing to do things for other people especially because they they were helped before so like so mm -hmm. it really I really like that turnaround from like, mm -hmm. Ricky and Patrick like mm -hmm. yeah I mean one of the things that'll be interesting to see I think is as we learn more of the other shadow lords and other living dolls will be to see like how unique of a group these you know individuals are of like Amilico, kate ricky patrick sean john um where i imagine like they're kind of the first group that's really almost like banded together in this sort of nature um i know we'll get to it talking a little bit about edward and his cronies but it doesn't really ever seem like there has been a group where they've kind of thrown selfishness out the window before within yeah. the shadow's house if that I makes sense that. And, and, i, and I know that. i'm taking like a huge leap here but um uh, getting no. back to the we're like almost there so okay but but anyways yeah. i guess my last point on the debut was um really enjoyed i think the author did a very smart pairing of the characters mm -hmm. where specifically for ricky and lou like lou is the only so one good. that yeah, could put Ricky in his place and, and mm. make him have his, his change mm. of heart, I feel like. So kudos, you know, to the author for that. They did it in a very smart manner. And, and I think it mm. just goes to show, like, they knew how to kind of cover the range of personality types to bring mm. together a great group of characters that we're kind of going on this journey with. So Yeah, because it's kind of a it's kind of a group of what could be difficult relationships you have the dolls and their and their masters and then the dolls competing with each other and the masters also competing amongst each other like it really shouldn't be conducive to building friendships and it did seem like from the like because during this whole um you know debut labyrinth arc you see other shadow masters high-ranking shadow masters observing everything that they're doing this whole time and mm -hmm. they do make some comments that would make you think that this is kind of unusual so i don't think it's a leap i think you're probably right i just also want to like add on to it like the fact that like we saw more of like the you know the upper like nobleman and i guess i guess like the grand master or like, the grandfather or whatever like again just building on that lore like we're, we're we're barely introduced to them but like it adds so much of like to this world that like like they kept because they kept like because ever kept referencing how he wants to move up to the third floor and then, mm -hmm. and like we're, and then we just got introduced to some of the people on the third floor, and just, just adds on to more of this mystery of this this giant, huge mansion of like what is it and like what's going on here. So again, shout outs for like, and this was going on during the debut too, where like where they still had a lot of focus on the debut. So like really good like pacing and just like and like world building on this part. So yeah, shout out no. to that definitely mm -hmm. definitely so and I, I think the last thing you know that we uh, omitted a little bit here from the debut is we really got to see the powers of the soot oh yeah which is yeah. also <laughs> really well kind of you know mixed in with everything that was going on where mm -hmm. we get to learn about john and his kind of explosive power with soots we get to learn about amilico and her ability to fly or form wings and kate um yeah. or kate sorry yeah. Um, I'll probably always going to do that, meaning like both of the masters and their living dolls. Um, 
And then, you know, how can we forget seeing Edward's moment that got an entire dedicated ending in mm-hmm. one of the episodes of him oh, yeah. kind of fully having his body which being we, taken over. Which we all thought. Like, and we, we still were, don't know a whole lot about. Well, we were so. confused because, like, because we thought, like, it was his power to, like, to, to become, um, become a shadow or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I guess I guess that can lead into the next segue, into, like, the big reveal that, that Kate ha- has with, like, after... Well, actually, before that, we should mention, too, the other important part is that we learned that that Rum and Shirley like didn't pass it, so they're the only ones yeah. who, like, who didn't um pass it. Well, actually, yeah, that actually does lead into the big reveal, like where we we saw we we thought we were thinking that if the the pair doesn't uh, doesn't make a pass the debut, then it would be the living doll that would just I, or I thought the living doll would just be dis- discarded, and then like they have to bring another living doll to match mm-hmm. the shadow master. But then it was a big reveal that actually Shirley was the one that that went away. And this is when they reveal that so the Shadow Masters, they're just was it, they're fairies? And they basically yeah. they just they're so there's all these collections of these these black soot of fairies and they take the form of humans. So they basically want to be human. And then that's what the other big reveal is that like living dolls, like, you know, they're not they're not humongous. They're actually real humans that they took from the village from below. So that that was like the big reveal there in this arc and then i guess i guess I should i should backtrack because i told taylor that the debut arc was the only arc i guess the next arc is the the last arc so I guess yeah david arc. backtrack I just, realized, <laughs> I just realized that just now whoops it's the last arc we just watched hey, man. yeah i just realized that i thought the whole thing was the whole thing but nope there was to your credit there were a lot of episodes given to the debut so yeah it happens <laughs> okay but um we also found out around that time too that um it was right around then that we learned as well that they're being brainwashed, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Through like the the grandfather's tea or whatever. Mm-hmm. So the, all all of the living dolls are being brainwashed into basically just being servants of Shadow House and only caring about Shadow's House prosperity and things like that. Yeah, and which is crazy because going all the way back to the very first episode, that's one of the first scenes that mm-hmm. we see as the series opens up is these kids in this room in the Shadow's House drinking mm-hmm. the the coffee or tea and. You know, us at the mm-hmm. time being like, hmm, okay, okay. interesting. Well, they also, and now yeah. being like, oh my god, also, the yeah. indoctrination, the brainwashing. They had the same speech too, and that's that's why that's what I was thinking. Like, I was I was thinking they were they were hum- the, the humongous because I thought, okay, the tech the tech like you know, living robots. So I thought, okay, this is how they're programmed. There's a blank slate. So mm-hmm. that's that's what I was. That's why I was thinking this whole time. Like, I wasn't even thinking about them being real humans. I know you guys were like hinting at it, but like. I thought I thought this would be one of those shows where, like, where it was again a bait and switch for them, where it seems obvious that they're real humans, but then I thought they're gonna go all the way and like and stick with that theme, but nope. Man, I thought for sure, like I I was convinced they were humans right from the get go. The only thing that moved me away from that was when Emilico fell out of that balcony. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> like God knows yeah, how many stories. Like, and, <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, well they're not human. <laughs> But no, yeah. I guess she's just very resilient. Anime, no, the, anime power. The only things I could think of, and this is being like overly nitpicky, is just the amount of food that the living oh, yeah. dolls eat. And it may be mm. just because we were shown what Amilico was eating. She was only eating mm. like a small loaf yeah. of bread each day. Mm-hmm. So if they were human, you would think like, man, she'd probably be extremely malnourished and like mm-hmm. very underweight. But mm-hmm. nobody is like that. But um, I think for me... Admittedly, I probably always had the inkling that they were human more so just because of what I had heard going into the show. I didn't, you know, have it spoiled for me that they were human, but knowing that there was kind of this deeper, darker mystery and twist at play is kind of just like, okay, they're probably humans. Like yeah. I was I was so more surprised I, at the shadows like being fairies and taking the form of humans. I thought that is a bigger yeah. surprise I thought, for, sure. for sure. I thought they were gonna be like 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 formerly humans that like lost like their soul or something. Something of that mm. nature. I didn't realize they'd be completely non-human. So, uh, yeah, I I was surprised too. I actually like it though because it reminds me a lot of um like I don't know if you guys know anything about changelings, like the whole lore behind that. But like no. they basically remind me a lot of changelings, and mm. at least what changelings do is they're kind of like trolls a little bit, if I understand correctly. And basically, they they exchange their children or babies with human babies or children so that they can get experience in the human world and bring back like knowledge and wealth and things like that Mm -hmm. and the babies that they exchange it with the human babies they bring them back to their world to like be their slaves 
basically and do a lot of their work for them um like they're not treated horribly but they definitely do the grunt work so that's kind of like what the vibes that this show is giving me and they since they were kind of fairies i think fairies actually fall fall into that concept a little bit as well so i haven't seen that done in anime so i really liked it a lot and was surprised makes sense yeah so and then also she mentioned too like this next part where we have edward trying to kidnap um uh, Miracle, because I guess I guess people should mention too how Kate was like the only one who wasn't like brainwashed because she didn't she didn't drink the the coffee or whatever, and then and so she had to like try to to um to cleanse off that that soot from from a miracle by making her drink so much water that she puked it all out. <laughs> yeah, basically, so, like, waterboarding her. That was, that was intense. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, very intense scene. So mm-hmm. and then eventually we see it. We see like all the other um the people from the debut. We see like. Their uh, living dolls eventually snap out of it too, but mm-hmm. but there's the there's the part where we have Edward trying to kidnap Emilko because 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 uh, because uh, Kate um because Kate realizes that this whole thing going on with the soot she's trying to she's trying to I guess like it, like expose the true nature of the Shadow's House and I guess that's mm-hmm. why she was like being she, she was saying before she had the secret that she needed to tell Milko and I guess that's what was being revealed here right, so I guess like. Right. I guess she was like being, she was being cold towards Emilko until she can like get to this part where she can reveal it to her. But, but then yeah, it's Edward kidnaps Emilko, and this is part I saw people were saying in the manga that this is different. That like that like that she's not supposed to get kidnapped. And so mm-hmm. so again, it's another mm-hmm. change in the anime. But um, but back to like Justin's point where it's like if you didn't tell me that this this change happened, I wouldn't have noticed. Like it, I felt like this, this last arc. It, Again, like just like the rest of the show, it flowed nice, and like I wouldn't have thought of anything like any changes if I didn't knew about didn't know about it. So, Definitely. I actually. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Justin. I'll let you no, go I was first. just gonna say to David's point real quick. You know, until this show gives me a reason to really feel like I need to go read the manga, I almost feel like I I don't want to do that because I don't want to disservice how well the anime has done with mm-hmm. kind of its direction and and flow of events, even if they are different. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would actually say that this last arc was pretty rough for me. I did not enjoy it very much at all. And I don't know. I can't comment on if it's because they changed it from the manga or not. I don't know what they changed. So I really don't know if if, if that's why. Um, but I just felt like this whole show had kind of kept me on my toes the whole time, wondering what's going to happen next. And I felt like um, the characters subverted expectations. And overall, it just felt really fresh. Whereas this last arc felt very straightforward and pretty, like, just typical for me. You know, Edward kidnaps Emilico. They go to save the day with, I mean, an okay plan. It manages to go all right. And, like, I think the thing that, I think the thing that bothered me the most, though, was Edward's character. I I just feel like his, his reasoning for going after Kate was kind of weak. His way of ascending floors i felt was really short-sighted um it just felt too much like a stereotypical kind of dumb villain at the end for me and Mm -hmm. i was expecting more out of edward than that and so yeah i i wasn't super pleased with it personally but i mean it wasn't like bad you know (laughs) yeah maybe that's why the manga yeah readers would make a big big fuss thing because again like that part of edward kidnapping kate or a miracle, like it didn't happen in the manga, so yeah, yeah. I think that's the big thing, like you said, then where it'll be interesting because I know for myself, I do plan to go back and read the manga at some mm-hmm. point, whether mm-hmm. I just continue to stay with the anime through however long it continues to get um, extended for, or if you know there's something where they just say, Hey, yeah, we don't know when the next one's gonna come, then I hop skip over. But it definitely will be interesting to see, like, how abrupt of a exclusion inclusion of this edward kidnapping a milico event was mm-hmm. uh but no i i could agree with you taylor uh it, it definitely was a lower quality kind of experience to end off on i think if i was to do things differently i would have ended right when they had revealed kind of the brainwashing and everything of all of the viewers of shadow's house and then left yeah. that open ended for a season Ooh, that, two because that would have been a, 
Nice ending, yeah. You know, where they're all kind yeah. of looking up and like saying the chant to mm-hmm. the the grandfather. I think that would have been a very impactful finale. I think of just so like, as well. oh shit, like you know, this is crazy now. Like, how are they going to get out of this? Whereas with what they chose to continue to extend, all we basically learn is like, okay, you know, this core group of people they all broke the brainwashing pretty easily admittedly mm-hmm. with what they had to do mm-hmm. um and only a Amil- had to be tortured everybody else just snapped out of it <laughs> yeah right <laughs> um and so to then just segue to Amilico getting kidnapped and that kind of just continuing the disdain that edward has for kate and her getting in the way of his kind of scaling up of the ranks within the shadows house it didn't really add that much more i felt like and especially with the where the conclusion of that went where they just escaped from edward and then they just kind of go back to you know their wing of the shadow house it was it was very flat i Mm. feel like so yeah also the actual escape itself was a little bit much it was a little (laughs) little much it was a little cheesy and you know of course everybody escaped with you know no harm or anything so but yeah, but I I do remember yeah like back to your point Justin like like I think it was like what episode ten was it that they that that ending you're talking about where they we finally got the where they were drinking it they were drinking doing the chant I remember yeah that I think too. it was like, ten they had that that big reveal and then I was thinking wait there's only like what three more episodes how are they gonna how are they gonna or maybe it was episode eleven where Kate gets or Lemuel gets kidnapped and then that's what I was thinking wait there's only two episodes left in the season how are they gonna resolve this so. That's like, yeah, that, and, that plays and ultimately, part, right? there like, wasn't anything that was resolved. It was pretty much just, you know, oh, mm-hmm. hey, Edward, stay in your own lane. And they're just yeah. kind of now back in their place. And, and now, I guess, you know, you could argue that, okay, well, now the next season is where do we go from here? You know, well, uh, it's definitely not as it, it's it's flat. Honestly, it's like, okay, cool. It's flat. I, it just felt a little bit awkward. I guess, you know, basically, if we've been, since we've been comparing it to Promise Neverland a little bit. Um, I remember with Promise Neverland by the end of the first season, that last episode, like, I got chills. I was, like, on the edge of my seat. I had no idea what was going to happen next. My heart was racing. Um, and I'm not going to go into why in case nobody here has seen it, but, (laughs) um, but, like, it was just, it, it just, like, nailed the ending. I could not wait for the second season. With Shadow's House, I'm still really looking forward to the second season. Absolutely, I would watch it. It was a great show. Um, I just felt like, I felt like the first two arcs were so strong that it could have had an ending like that as well. And it, it just wasn't like that. But I would still say that it's much better than many other first seasons of similar type of anime that I've seen. Like, even with some of its weaknesses. I don't know if you guys would agree, but... No, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. No, I'm in the same boat as well. Um... I think, yeah, so I think we're going like, to transition to our general thoughts um do you want to give our general thoughts like with the spoilers or you want to make this spoiler free or mm, let's just do spoiler free okay so okay. oh we're at uh so hopefully uh, i'll need to try to timestamp this for us but so we'll make this part so this is the part here spoiler free if you just jumped in now from the description um we're gonna just give our general spoiler free spoiler free thoughts to shadow's house i guess the first question is like after watching a show like this, I guess the first thing I always ask people is like, would you recommend this to other people? Absolutely. It, Just it's, thinking about I it. I know, it's funny <laughs> with my hesitation here because, again, I, I don't want to come off as biased with, you know, what I had heard from the show going into it and, and being, you know, such a fan of Promise Neverland, of reading the manga, you know, uh, directly. So um, I think if you have or are looking you know, for a show to pick up, I I think it's a great option to give kind of the three episode test to whether or not I can full heartedly recommend it. I I don't think I'm quite there, to be honest. I I think it's something that with a a second season, I would feel more comfortable just because, you know, we do only Mm -hmm. have, we did only have 12 or 13 episodes. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know that is kind of the norm nowadays for anime originals and everything, but Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm just well, old-fashioned that I, I really want a, a 24 episode well, it's not kind of length to manga, lock it in. But yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank but you. I, I think what you meant to say is like, um, like it's it's, uh, it's more split cores are more the the norm nowadays. Like we don't yeah, get the full 24 episodes as much as we do. So. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'd say I'm on the fence. If you have time and if you're looking for something and you enjoy kind of mystery and and, and, and psychological things, then go for it. Uh, if not, it's there. You can check it out. But at the end of the day, if you don't, hey, no harm, no foul. I think for I would me, say that like, oh. oh, go ahead. OK, well, I, I think for me, I was going to say like, like usually I would like just say I would say yes to almost any anime fan but i guess maybe the caveat is like i guess if you're looking for something more like more different than you used to like if you're new to anime if you've only seen a couple of shows or if you've only seen a couple of shows in a specific genre if you want to branch out something new or if you do want like something more a mystery more like i guess maybe suspense like style then i definitely would recommend this to you like if like like the only people I wouldn't recommend this would be like maybe if you're just ca- a casual anime fan and you're looking for something else, like something more more of the traditional anime, maybe like mm. maybe this a little, a little bit out of the wheelhouse for you. But I think like for people who want to see something something more different, I definitely recommend it. Like like the uh, yeah, especially if you're if you're just getting the anime and you want something more 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 different, I I would definitely recommend. It. I lean more on like Taylor's side, like yeah. I would full heartedly recommend this, even without having seen a second season or read the manga, because I've read I've heard enough good things about the manga that it sounds like that's pretty strong. So I feel like if you what were to watch this first season and liked it, then you can always fall back onto the manga if you are unhappy with some of the routes that the anime took. Like I feel like you'll be able to enjoy some aspect basically of this universe, depending on the medium. So that's why I would I would recommend it. Um, and I would recommend it for people who are looking for something that is plot driven um, and that does have a darker edge to it. The nice thing about it is it's not super dark. Um, like there, there's not like gore. There's not, um, you know, anything really twisted. <laughs> and so uh, it's kind of like dark light. <laughs> it's, so, more, it's more of the suspense feeling. Than... Yeah, it's very suspenseful and it will kind of keep you guessing. And it's not something that you can just put on in the background. You have to like sit down and focus on it. But mm-hmm. I feel like there's a really good payoff with that. And I feel like the show leaves a lot of Easter eggs for for like foreshadowing and things like that that are really satisfying to see play out later on in the season. Um, so if you, those are the kind of elements that you enjoy from a show. I think you'd like it. And also, I just feel like the characters are very strong, too. Like, I, I, I can't remember the last time I went through a whole first season of a show remembering all the characters names like really i truly can't remember and so i thought that was impressive i know all their names they like they're all very distinct to me um so if that's something that you are looking for that's a highlight as well also uh, i also do that like yeah if you're you know if you're new to anime and um you're not familiar with the way that you know how again like we're saying or actually i mean we were mentioning this earlier in our earlier discussion how um a lot of, like the the visuals and what you see is like all these you know these these cute little girls and and how we keep talking about how this is more of like a suspenseful mystery show so like this is the thing that happens a lot in anime where they they kind of bait you with like the with the cute characters mm-hmm. and ends up being you know more 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 creepy and sinister than it lets on to so mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. so this is also like yeah if you're new to anime this is a good way to like get used to the way that like this this happens a lot in like a lot of different shows where <laughs> they bait you in with like yeah the cute characters and it turns out to be something something you know more more to than that so i get another recommendation for that as well so don't don't mm-hmm. don't let the don't let the yeah like the, the visuals or all the the, the little like you know just a miracle well, the main you, character. Well, <laughs> don't let don't, don't let yeah, that silliness is a good way to put don't it. let that like um be, be your full impression of the, of the show uh, we're we're, mm-hmm. we're here to say it like there's more than this mm-hmm. that that's why we keep mentioning yep. the creepy factor that's why we keep mentioning the suspense so that's why we we Uh, highly recommend the show as well Uh, yeah definitely go ahead taylor i was just gonna say sorry just finishing off david's thought take it from me i hate lolly stuff more than anything (laughs) on this planet like i will flat out avoid anything that has a lolly in it and thank (laughs) god justin talked me into watching because i would have been really sad if i hadn't watched it take it from me (laughs) no and and the only thing i wanted to add to, to david's point that i think can add more context to to my kind of recommendation is I think David, what you said really well is, you know, taking this from the perspective of a newer anime viewer who maybe doesn't have a lot of shows under their belt versus somebody who is very well versed in 
the different tropes and different styles and genres and everything. I think with that in mind, you know, if you do have kind of that experience in shows under your belt, I think this is a really great show that you don't want to miss like, out if on. That's, if and that's I think you'll you, rec- you'll be able to recognize yeah. that. If that's you, like I can definitely easily recommend this to you. Like you'll like you'll yeah. definitely enjoy how like fresh and original this feels. Exactly. And so I, I think then conversely, if it's someone who doesn't have many shows under their belt, you know, there's a lot of other things that all of us at the end of the day could sit here and say, hey, go watch that instead. So I think that was the only reason to just give a little more context of why I was a little bit on the fence of, hey, you should check this out or hey, you can hold off on things like that. But I think with your guys's coverage, we had a, a pretty sound basis of, of every viewpoint of it. So very happy to see that. <laughs> yeah i guess i should say this for like the last question because i mean that's basically i was gonna ask like just overall general thoughts on it but we basically i feel like we went through a lot of like yeah you, how much we, we all explained it pretty well yeah how much you recommend mm. so is is there anything that you feel should have really been done differently if you know we had to sit here and we had to nitpick at a certain thing the one thing for me that i guess i, I feel like i have anyone brought this up but like i i kind of like I kind of wish the music matched more with um the more suspenseful feeling because a lot like not the, like it's like mm-hmm. like i mean the visuals is one thing I, I can see that being like as the juxtaposition with like of like the cute characters and like the creepy factor but like there's some parts where like i feel like i wish the music was more had that more like more sinister more sinister more more kind of like that horror mm-hmm. movie like soundtrack mm-hmm. i wish we had some more of that especially like like yeah one of the more creepy parts like i wish it kind of like kind of threw me off a little bit that we didn't like mm-hmm. the music didn't match up with it so i wish that part was that's like the only thing i would nitpick really is so, like i kind of wish the music fit more of like with with um with the creepy tone and it, it would really like elevate that for me at, for this show mm-hmm. so i actually my, completely that's... agree i agree with you on that i think that's I, a really I, good point the worst part is i i also agree with that if i had to you know pick something oh, okay. specifically i, I, I think you like you said you, know... you were like really really into the music but well, I like the opening and the ending songs a oh, lot. That's, I meant I meant the soundtrack, yeah, like the soundtrack yeah. during the show. No, d- definitely to your point, you know, especially with suspense, thriller. I wouldn't call this horror per se, because to Taylor's point, it doesn't really get too graphic or anything in that yeah. nature. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, just you know, to really drive in your point, David, like the timing of things that they could have done with you know soundtracks and music to really amplify kind of that that level of tenseness or um kind of depth to it would have really just kind of knocked it out of the park i think so that really is the one area that i think things could have been done a little bit better so if if that's all they got going against them then hey not too bad yeah i really don't even think there's too much i would change even with some of the more um constructive criticism that i had towards the last arc again i just feel like there were a lot of decisions that were made behind the scene for doing it that way um I feel like not knowing if you have a second season is is really critical to know to figure out how to map out your first season. <laughs> and so I feel like I don't know that it really could have gone any like I don't think that third arc could have really gone much more smoothly unless they knew for sure they were getting a second season and they could adapt yeah. the manga. Also, well, I should perfectly. mention here, I should mention this because this so. is the spoiler free section. So for people who didn't see the discussion, I think I don't know if I I don't know where they're gonna leave up. Like we did bring up that like the manga is different than the anime i just i think we're all in agreement that like don't let that deter you away from this show or mm-hmm. or not i mean yeah. you can read the manga if you want but like don't let the fact that something's changed in the anime compared to the manga mm-hmm. deter you from watching it mm-hmm. it's still a good show mm-hmm. even with the changes so, so mm-hmm. that's like the only other thing I, I would say yeah like honestly if the show just stopped here and there was never a second season and let's just say this was uh an anime original and there was no manga i would still have been happy to have sat here and watched what i watched um like, it kind of reminds me of Death Parade in that way, where it started bringing in a whole universe near the end. <laughs> we were just like, well, the story's over now. Forget everything we just told you about this universe, <laughs> which was a little bit weird. But ultimately, the so many other things were so strong that I still really enjoyed watching it. And I feel exactly the same way about Shadow's House. Yeah, I think last thing for me, just in the topics of like nitpicks or anything is... Um, hopefully, you know, as we get more content on the anime side of things, um, we don't see an introduction of too many characters i think right Mm -hmm. now you know they've done a really good job of introducing characters with purpose but Mm -hmm. i will say i am admittedly potentially a little bit worried just from the get-go but you know i know with how long running the manga and everything is we're probably going to get an insight into all the different shadow lords and everything that have been sitting with the grandfather so 
that's the only thing that right now, if I had to sit and be nitpicky, I'm just like, oh man, is everybody going to get, you know, their time in the spotlight, mm -hmm. so to speak, so we can really care for these different characters. Because as we said from yeah. the very beginning, this is a huge mansion. There mm -hmm. is a shit ton of Shadow Lords and Living Dolls, and so Just hopefully so they're they're picking this yeah they're picking and choosing the right people to to focus on. That's all I want, and I don't want to ever hopefully mm -hmm. see that get too convoluted. So, yeah, that's a good yeah. point. So I think we're gonna wrap this up. That was our discussion on Shadow's house. I feel good about this. I think we hit, we hit through a lot of things. We didn't hit through everything, but that's that's our discussion. Um. Let us know in the comments, I guess, what you think, like what you thought. If you missed anything, let us know. I guess um, if you want to just tell us the difference in manga, I know someone else, someone will. So let us know. Also, again, this is um, it's kind of a new format for us too. So um, so if there's if there's a show that you want us to talk about that we didn't mention before, I feel always feel free to leave it in the comments and we'll see if we can get to it. Um, if you want to see our discussions on our current season, um, again, check our Discord. We're out, This recording is during summer 2021 season, so want to see our thoughts on the, the weekly episodes and go there that's that's what replaced our old format so thanks thanks everyone for joining us for shadow's house it was a lot of fun and we'll continue next time with our next episode whatever show that will be so we'll see you Perfect. later bye bye guys bye Jordan, what are your thoughts about uh, Shadow's House? Ah, yes, it's a it's a great <laughs> show. Ten out of ten. Shame. All right, Trump, there we go. Trump.